how would you looking back now that the season is over, how would you regrade the 2022 off season? You know, now that hindsight is 2020. B plus of Al Avila did his, did his best. I mean, he made the right moves. Uh, I've gotten into arguments about how we should have won after Verlander. And so Eduardo Rodriguez, I keep reiterating that Verlander is probably still one of the highest risk signings, even after a Cy Young award winning season, assuming he wins it. It, I mean, they're going to be 40, Tommy John, still high risk. And I think Eduardo Rodriguez long-term is much better signing than Verlander. He didn't want to shell out $300 million for Correa. No one wanted to shell out $300 million for Correa. Seager and Semyon already went to the Rangers. They were quick about that. We had a negative like 1.2 F war in 2021 among shortstops, among Zach Short and Willie Castro. Javi Baez fixed that. Uh, even during a down year, he better than Willie Castro and Zach Short. Um, Austin Meadows trade, the clip of Isak Paredes going into the dugout and the Rays hitting coach being like, the Tigers are freaking idiots or whatever he says. Kind of. Isak Paredes ended up being the Tampa's best hitter. And I think seeing what happened to Candelario, we wish we would have had him. But I think in the long run, Austin Meadows will be better for the org than what Paredes would bring, um, even though he fits Scott Harris's mold of high walk, low strikeout. Well, I guess he struck out a lot more this year. But, yeah, I think Alavila did his best. I don't, I don't blame the offseason on him. I blame, I blame how we got to this point on him. What about you, Chris? Yeah, you know, so much in, in so often in baseball, like I, I, I try to grade the process rather than results because baseball is such a random game. And I still don't have a huge problem with the process that they had last year. Uh, I, you know, at the time, I like everybody else, I think I wanted Korea more than Baez. And, and Baez was probably my, you know, last choice of those shortstops. But I still thought he was a good player and they got him for what I thought was a reasonable deal. So I wasn't super upset about that. And I, Eduardo Rodriguez was the guy I wanted them to go get. I was really happy they got him. Andrew Chafin was a great addition to the bullpen. Michael Pineda was fine, whatever, you know, a back-end starter. And then the trade for Austin Meadows was like, this is this is perfect. They need an outfielder. They need power. And they have enough infielders right now. So you've, you've made a, a, a good trade. Like So the process was like a B-plus to me at worst. And the results were an F. And that's just baseball. I, I don't know. I, I can't ever explain what happened this year. There was like a curse that uh, fell on the Tigers. Just just the, the, the fact that you end up with two players who are just away from the team for extended periods because of you know mental health issues. Like how often do you ever hear that happening to one guy, let alone two the same year to the same team? It, it, it's just crazy. And then, you know, Baez had, I think Baez basically spent about six weeks playing with a, you know, nearly broken thumb or, you know, a thumb that wasn't working. And if you look at his May stats, they're just awful. But the rest of the year, he was pretty good. Like, you know, he's not an all-star, but he was acceptable. And his defense was iffy, so we got to get that work worked out. But, you know, I mean, I, I thought it was okay at the time, and it just didn't work out. And that's just the way it goes in baseball. I would give it a solid B. At B, not B+, plus, only because the following reasons. I thought that I, I liked the Rodriguez signing. I liked – the Chafin signing, that was one that I thought would, when I was working at Motor City Bengals, a suggestion because based off his numbers against lefties and righties, that was going to shore up a, a bullpen that definitely needed it. But I still thought they needed to get another power bat in the outfield. I thought that you're taking a risk by relying on way too many variables with you're expecting Riley Green to hit 300. You're expecting Akil Hadou to come back his second year to hit like he did last year. And I, and I remain steadfast because his numbers indicated last year against lefties, he was struggling. And so I don't know how in one winter you can turn around like that. And so when the Parker Meadows trade, I was excited for that, or excuse me, the Austin Meadows trade happened. I was excited for that. I thought that was a good move. Parades. They tried with Parades. He wasn't working out here. <laughs> yeah, Chris, uh, there, yeah, there's a lot of other things that, uh, Let's just say that Paredes 
maybe overstate his welcome. I don't know. We'll, we'll never know truly, but it didn't work out for the Tigers. And I think that at the time you look at all the upside Austin Meadows possessed. Yeah. What Chris said is just like, it, it's a freaky freakish occurrence. And I, for the life of me, of all the baseball I've seen to have the 3.4 runs per game in the modern era of baseball, and you have a WRC plus not even close to a hundred you are cursed. Somebody, I mean, look, Cubans believe in voodoo, that there's Cuban Santeria, okay? Alex, or excuse me, Alavila's Cuban. There's somebody out there that was just like, just putting the, no, I'm, all jokes aside, I, I I would just, you know, not to say I would know anything about that, but my, my point is, um, my, my point is simple, is that it is Murphy's Law in full effect. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And I didn't think they were going to push for a playoff spot However, I thought based off if the rotation stayed healthy. And that's another thing they didn't do. Last year, they stocked them the AAA with guys like Adrian Rodriguez and minor league free agents. And this year, that didn't happen. And so I was kind of curious about that. And so, yeah, there's everything that could go wrong went wrong. And there's no logical explanation behind any of it. Baez, to be fair, had a thumb injury early on. And people were ragging him on. There are people still ragging him now that he didn't have a good year. When in the second half of the season, he put up some of the best numbers the Tigers had. It was the only offensive weapon the Tigers had, let's face it. And so for anybody to go, well, he's just tricking on everything. That's what you signed up for. That's what you got. So don't – every Cub fan on Twitter, everybody on their uh, – certain Mets fans were like, that's what you're going to get with him. And Tiger fans, totally blissfully unaware, apparently, or something to that effect. You were going to get that. So don't act surprised. When that was happening, lowest lowest strikeout rate of his career, tied for a lowest strikeout rate of his career. So thank you. Yeah, exactly. But no one, but of course, they're going to look at what pitching ninja did with a video of his and 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 everybody else that are pungents in this town that are going to rag on him and he murdered murdered lefties too. He was really good yeah. against lefties. It was just those righties with their sliders. Yeah, but again, what do I know? I don't watch the game or anything. You guys were definitely a lot more positive than me. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with a C plus. Uh, cause like I like the chafing uh chafing signing. I didn't have a problem with the bias signing at all. I think he's gonna improve as as the years go on. Honestly, it's because I think Green's gonna get better. Torkelson's gonna get better. And Javi Bias is your best hitter. I don't think gets you very far. But if he's your you know third or fourth best hitter, I think that bodes well. Um, the Tucker Barnhart trade, even though I don't feel like it worked out that well, I thought that was a good trade. Uh, the only thing I really disagree with you guys on is like the Austin Meadows trade. I wasn't a fan of that from the beginning just because I thought Paredes still had some potential. I just wasn't a fan of them giving up that draft pick. Um, it was the 71st pick in, in the draft this year, and I just feel like a good team would have taken that pick like the Rays probably probably did and find a, a young player that in the future is going to help them. I just thought for the Meadows deal, it was kind of short-sighted, uh, just kind of reactionary to Riley Green getting injured. And um, he can still turn it around, but I just think having that draft pick and being able to add a young player and also Paredes, who's still so young and is so cheap and has so many years of control left, um, I thought that was a little much to give up for a guy who – is really just an offensive player in Meadows doesn't provide you a whole lot defensively or on the base pass. And I just saw it to be like kind of a reactionary trade. Um, and then Erod, I'll have to disagree with you a little bit on there just because I feel like he's never really been like an all-star level pitcher. He's always just kind of been this middle of the road, like middle of the rotation starter. And um, maybe they saw something in him, but to this point, he's just, Never really been able to take that next step, and I'm not sure if he ever will. So I'll, I'll go with the C, C plus. 